Good morning, everyone. Before I call the meeting to order, I'd like to note for the record that I will serve as acting chairman for the meeting. I now call to order the meeting of the directors of the New York State Urban Development Corporation doing business as Empire State Development for Thursday, April 16, 2015. The directors have received the written materials in advance of this meeting, and they are free to ask questions at any time. As noted on the agenda posted to the Internet, we welcome public comment on the items on the following agenda. To ensure maximum opportunity for participation, speakers representing themselves may speak for up to two minutes each, and those representing groups may speak for up to four minutes, one speaker per group. Speakers' comments may address only items considered at today's meeting. Before we begin with the substantive portion of the meeting, I'd like to ask the directors whether anyone has any potential conflict of interest with respect to any of the items on the agenda. If so, I would ask you to please make an appropriate disclosure on the record at this time. We will then be sure that you may recuse yourself from any discussion or vote with regard to such item or items. No conflicts. Thank you. Thank you. For the first item on today's agenda is the approval of the minutes of the March 19th, 2015 Director's Meeting. Are there any questions, comments, additions, or deletions with regard to the minutes? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Excellent. Um, before I get into the next item uh, with Rich, just say a few things. Uh, one, I'm very excited about uh, the topics that we're going to be addressing at the meeting today. So they're going to touch on a number of areas, including infrastructure projects, manufacturing projects, tour tourism and promotion, historic rehab and redevelopment, science and engineering projects, venture capital, and even trade missions has worked its way onto our agendas. Similarly, I want to comment very briefly on <coughs> the recently passed budget and how it impacts uh, Empire State Development. First of all, it assures everyone of another very busy year ahead. Uh, and in the budget, there's a particular focus just to hit some of the highlights as it relates to ESD on Global New York, as you know, on upstate revitalization, the $1.5 billion revitalization challenge for the upstate regions, $1.5 billion spread over five years. That will be a very active uh, project for uh, seven of the regions of Empire State Development, right, John? Yeah. Uh, throughout the spring and summer. Uh, the REDCs are funded again for another year, so that whole uh, approach, the decentralized approach to economic development, is again getting funding, both capital grants, Excelsior tax credits, state agency funding. So it'll be another year, a busy year for ESD in all of the regions of ESD. Additionally, a lot of funding around broadband are in the budget, so there'll be a lot of activity, continued activity on the broadband uh, initiative. And in today's agenda, I believe we have approval, potential approval of our first venture fund. So, and there's been another $50 million of uh, funding into the innovation venture fund for New York State. So the budget has a lot of items. I just hit five of them that impact Empire State Development, but there are many more in addition to the considerable work we're doing all the time on real estate development, on MWBE, on community development, on small business development. Uh, so ESD always has a busy agenda. Uh, and it will be so again in the 2015-2016 year. So we're excited about that. Okay, with that, um, we're, I'm going to turn the meeting over to uh, Rich to provide a brief overview of the information materials that were emailed to you yesterday by Mahul regarding ESD's Open for Business program. A hard copy of those materials is at your place. Uh, Rich will also answer any questions that you may have. So we'll turn the meeting over to Rich. Thank you, Howard. <coughs> Uh, during the last board meeting, some questions were asked regarding performance metrics and the effectiveness of the Open for Business marketing spending. We have prepared a report for the board which outlines in these two documents, the first document, an overview of the history of the Open for Business marketing activity as well as highlights on the performance metrics that we use and the performance of the efforts themselves. In addition, 
You also have a report from Russell Research. Russell Research is a large, well-respected national market research firm that specializes in marketing measurement and the effectiveness of marketing activities. They have been the outside research firm that we have used to actually measure the performance of the advertising and marketing activities. And this report was put together by them as a summary of all of the research that has been done. The headlines for the report are very simply this, that our objective in the marketing activities that we're doing is to offset what has been prior to the Cuomo administration, a lack of any kind of marketing efforts placed behind New York State for business attraction and retention or <coughs> really for tourism. The administration came in with a very aggressive agenda that recognized that creating jobs was critical, that an, a strategy for job creation that included policy and legislative initiatives was put in place. But the perceptions of the state as a place to do business were very poor. As a result, the role of marketing was to change those perceptions and to put New York State into the consideration set for those businesses that were either expanding, located in the state, starting a new business, or potentially relocating from an outside state. From a tourism standpoint, there was a similar lack of marketing initiatives over the past 10 years prior to the administration coming into place. And the role of the tourism marketing is very similar, which is how do we make sure that New York State, particularly upstate destinations where tourism is a critical part of the economy, are top of mind for potential visitors in surrounding states as well as inside the state. The analysis of the marketing indicates that the advertising has been very effective in driving people to various websites where we have additional information that can enhance people's perceptions of the state, and that we've seen significant increases in website visits when we are advertising and when we are not advertising. We also know that there are significant increases from a business attraction standpoint among small, medium, and large-sized business executives in terms of the perceptions of New York State as an effective place to do business, as a place where companies could, could succeed, and increases in consideration of New York State as a place to do business when they're thinking about relocating, expanding, or starting a business. From a tourism perspective, we see on a consistent basis the increase in consideration of New York State, ex New York City, which is an important measurement for us, as a destination amongst uh, driving distance destinations across the state. This research is done on an ongoing basis, consistently shows growth, and as a result, we feel provides strong support for the effectiveness of the open for business marketing programs. All right. So, um, and any questions uh, for Rich on uh, his presentation? Any comments? Yeah, um, I gathered from the materials that um, the focus of the marketing is, or the markets that you focus on, is, are the ones that are close to New York. Is that correct? So the uh, focus for the tourism marketing right. is very much New York State plus the markets that are within a four to five hour mm -hmm. driving distance from any uh, sort of primary New York State tourism destination. So it includes Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Connecticut, as well as Massachusetts. The assumption that people will drive to go to um, the Finger Lakes Finger or Lakes, the, Adirondacks. the Adirondacks. Yeah. Correct. So. Okay. And is it? It's primarily a TV com campaign, or is there also print media? The vast majority of the money is spent in television, but there are additional media that are used. Digital media um, is used um, more significantly probably than print. But we also use out of home for tourism mm -hmm. and some print activity and specialized niche publications for business attraction marketing. We have 
um, unfortunately, over the, as, as I think you all know, the course of many decades, New York, unfortunately, did a great job of convincing people it wasn't particularly business friendly. And the perception of New York, you won't be surprised, for a long time was that this was a very difficult place to do business. Also, we had policies that were high on spending and high on taxing. Um, so without any particularly business-friendly programs or business investment, employment emphasis, New York continued to decline in so many ways economically, and that was felt really hard in upstate New York, as I think most of you know. With fiscal discipline, with an environment that's more conducive to investment and employment, with programs like Startup New York that have dramatically changed the landscape for companies to potentially do business in New York and relocate to New York, uh, with our Excelsior tax credits, with the Regional Economic Development Councils, with so many initiatives that we have to and so much uh, better fiscal discipline, New York is a different place to do business today than it was. We can't keep that a secret. We shouldn't keep that a secret. We invest a lot of money in uh, these programs and creating a better environment. So fortunately, uh, we have been promoting that. We've been promoting starting with the new New York and with Startup New York and small business development. and. With so many programs we have uh, in the state, there's really no good reason to keep that a secret. So New York has changed dramatically in people's minds. It's a place to do business, whether you're a business person in the state or you're a business person out of the state. We've done a lot, Rich. The efforts have been, I think, very impactful. The statistics bear that out in dramatic fashion, I would say. So. It's great that we have a lot more programs for business and to encourage investment. And it's also great that we're not keeping that a secret, that we're promoting it and telling the world. So when I talk to places like the BNE or other regional business attraction agencies around the state, they are bringing with activity and enthusiasm about how much activity they have going on in their region. We have driving people to websites, we're changing the perceptions of New York, and we're creating a lot more economic activity and interest across the state, including places that have not had people knocking on their door for a very long time throughout the upstate region. So at the moment, on behalf of upstaters, they can't do the change, they change the perception of that. Are there plans to do a separate region uh, tourism advertising in, let's say, let's say, private place in Northeast for this summer? The reason being, we're seeing obviously with uh, a very high dollar, a fall off. Yeah, we'll, we'll see that for a while. We fall off in Europe in tourists and tourist perception. And basically, any place affected by the currency change. And so it may be, you know, a time to make up for that shortfall by making sure we're getting Pennsylvanians and Jerseyans and Connecticut. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it, it really, in absolutely, we were actually in the Adirondacks meeting with all of the TPAs from various uh, areas, and um, what, what became very apparent is um, Canada still represents a huge opportunity for us to promote tourism. We just recently completed, completed shopping promotion in the city, and we got resounding place our strength for international tourists, which spend so much more money than um, domestic uh, tourism. I think we attribute 400,000 jobs to international tourism alone. It's a big, big suit. Um, employment sector, uh, and it's growing as the world's wealth increases, overseas visitation increases, international travelers spend a lot of time and money here in New York, uh, and it's great to be number one. So I think it's a really, uh, it's a great growth story for New York State. Yeah. Uh, and it's a great opportunity. So I'm glad to see us spending a lot on tourism, marketing. Some of our 
agenda items get to um, tourism grants, uh, craft beverage grants. We have a number of different types of tourism activities. Some of them are focused upstate. New York City, of course, is the largest tourism draw in the state by a lot. Um, but when people come internationally, they spend a lot of time in New York. Um, so I think part of our focus has been trying to draw them upstate, you know, while they're in correct. New York as well. So length of stay. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, Splendid is going to provide us with a summary of all the project items on the agenda. Once Splendid has completed this summary, I'll call on the directors of the regional offices with their representatives to present items from their regions. Glenn, go ahead. Uh, thank you, and uh, good morning. Uh, the directors will be requested con to consider funding for 16 discretionary projects, including one Economic Transformation Fund grant for $8.5 million, two Open for Business Craft Beverage Marketing grants totaling $500,000, one Metropolitan Economic Revitalization Fund loan for $5 million. One Empire State Economic Development Fund grant for $5 million. One Downstate Revitalization Fund grant for $2.5 million. Two New York State uh, Innovation Venture Capital Fund grants totaling $3.6 million. Uh, these projects also include 811 Regional Council awards as follows. Uh, one Economic Development Purposes Fund grant for $400,000 nine regional council uh, capital fund grants totaling 12.6 million and one market new york grant for 25,000 uh, the 16 project take place in central new york capital new york city southern tier finger lakes mohawk valley long island and the north country regions uh, the project will also leverage 740 million in additional investments um, retain 517 jobs and create 926 jobs in the state Thank you. Great. Thanks, Glenn. Um, before I turn it over to uh, Ken Tompkins, um, I'm just going to, uh, and for anyone who's in the room for the first time, ESG uh, considers items at various stages of uh, development. So sometimes we're discussing and considering an item uh, at the very early stage, but oftentimes we're really reviewing items that are completed. because the uh, agreement that ESD has with the entity often requires completion before final disbursement. So um, I, just, I would just ask the presenters as they're talking about their project, just give some indication on, you know, what stage of uh, that continuum the project you're discussing is. Early stage, we're considering it uh, at the early stage, or really this project has been completed. And it's, you know, we're really basically approving it so, so it can receive its final um, distributions. Okay. Uh, Ken Tompkins, the director of the SD's Mohawk Valley Regional Office, is up next, and he'll present the Rome H2O Economic Transformation Program item for the director's consideration. Ken, when you're ready. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, and thank you. Good morning, directors. Uh, the directors are being asked to approve a grant of up to eight million five hundred thousand dollars to be used toward the installation and expansion of public water and sewer infrastructure that will serve uh, this West Rome and South Rome brownfield opportunity areas within the city of Rome in Oneida County, New York. Uh, the total project cost uh, is approximately ten point six million dollars. This project is known locally as Rome H2O. Uh, its genesis was in the closing of the Oneida Correctional Facility in 2011. The city suffered a, a, a substantial setback, losing 500 corrections uh, officers and civilian workers. And although the Griffiths Business and Technology part has been enjoying uh, great success and uh, contributing uh, moderately uh, to the city of Rome, nonetheless, water is a limiting factor for growth in the community and for its uh, continued revitalization. So. In November of 2013, uh, in order to provide the city of Rome with a safe, reliable, and sustainable water supply, Governor Cuomo announced a major water sewer infrastructure improvement program. Uh, this this uh, has subsequently become known as Rome H2O, and uh, uh, offered a grant of up to eight and a half million dollars from the Economic Transformation Program towards uh, the endeavor. Uh, the actual 
sections of Rome uh, uh, include, uh, uh, there, are, there are two sections of, of the city that will be improved and see such things as the installation of elevated storage tanks, um, connecting fragmented supply systems, increasing pressure, uh, and generally the quality of the water. The result will be that uh, uh, 1,000 residents and more than 50 businesses will enjoy uh, pr a clean and reliable water supply uh, improvements to the infrastructure, and this will help uh, promote industrial and commercial growth in Rome. The status, Mr. Chairman, uh, is that this project has its planning uh, in place, uh, permitting, et cetera. It is set to begin uh, now that good weather has arrived, and they anticipate completion of the project by the end of, uh, 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 I was going to say 2000, uh, December of 2000, in uh, 15, but I, I think they marked it for December 2016 in total. So it's about to begin. Uh, it, it has not uh, been completed yet. Okay. Yeah, I think as you point out, it was originally authorized in the 13-14 budget and then reappropriated subsequently. So it's good to see it starting shortly. Indeed. Do the directors have any uh, questions or comment on this project? Does the public have any comment on the uh, this project? Motion to approve. So moved. Seconded. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great. Uh, motion carried. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank Joe you Tasmo, very much. Direct Thank you, sir. Uh, Director of ESD's New York City Regional Office is up next, and he'll present e clock items EDF for your consideration. Joe. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good morning. The directors are requested to approve a $500,000 grant to Eglut Corporation in connection with the $16 million retention and expansion project in Little Neck, Queens. The company, which was founded in 1956, designs and manufactures watches. These watches are marketed and sold under various brands, which include the company's proprietary brands, Armatron and Sprout, as well as its licensed brands, which include Anne Klein, Nine West, J. Lo by Jennifer Lopez, uh, Vince Camuto, and Bagley Mishka. The company's customers include retailers such as Walmart, J.C. Penney's, Kohl's, Macy's, and Sears. Armatron ranks as one of the top fashion watch brands in the United States, along with Timex, Fossil, Seiko, Casio, and Pulsar. The company currently has 348 employees. Prior to locating to the former Leviton plant in Little Neck, uh, Egluck was based in a 240,000 square foot space in Long Island City, leased to it by the City University of New York. As CUNY was in need of additional classroom space at its LaGuardia Community College campus, the company was required to find another location. Therefore, in the spring of 2013, the company ex approached ESD regarding possible incentives to retain its pres presence in New York State as it was considering a move to New Jersey. ESD responded by offering the company a $500,000 grant, as well as a $2.5 million uh, Excelsior tax credit um, uh, package. The company has expanded an existing 154,000 square foot facility by adding uh, 81,000 square feet, 235,000 square feet total, and has purchased new machinery and equipment. So this project is largely completed. The company moved into the new space in December of the last year. Um, in addition to retaining the 348 existing jobs, the company has committed to create 80 new jobs. The company has already created 33 of these new jobs. Thank you. Great. Uh, do the directors have any question or comment for uh, Joe? Yes. Uh, new jobs that are being created, these are manufacturing jobs? That's correct. There are some great images of the uh, in, in the book on the before and after pictures as well. It's very striking. It's great to see. Any other questions or comments? Any um, comment from the public on this project? Okay. Uh, motion to approve. So moved. Second. 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 Excellent. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. Um, Sam. We know you have the best job at ESD. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to present the craft beverage grant program item for the director's consideration. Take it away. Thank, Thank you, sir. Chairman. <clears throat> uh, the directors are requested to approve uh, two grants total totaling $500,000. Uh, they're part of the craft beverage grant program. 
uh, which this uh, board authorized on December 17th, 2014, the guidelines and the program. Um, and we have broken this program. The $3 million is, a, is, what is the value of this program, which the governor uh, traded during his uh, April 2014 Wine Spirits and Cider Summit. Uh, and so this is divided into two pots of uh, funds, $2 million for a marketing match program, which leverages a dollar for dollar private investment, and then a tourism promotion grant for a million dollars. Um, the two applicants we have today are applying through the uh, Craft Beverage Marketing Match Program, uh, the first being the uh, New York Wine and Grape Foundation, uh, which will be doing what's known as a book design project, basically a, um, uh, a booklet that will highlight all the great wine regions in New York State, our, our top producers, and this is going to be part of a wine enthusiast uh, insert that should be coming out sometime this fall. So if you're a wine enthusiast subscriber, you should be looking forward to that. Uh, so it's going to reach approximately 300 to 500,000 people. And our state wineries that participate in this project will also have the booklet available uh, on site. Uh, the reason this project is important is uh, uh, you may or may not know New York State was recognized by wine enthusiasts as wine region of the year. Uh, and we uh, beat out uh, areas such as Sonoma County, Chianti, Italy, and uh, one of the top regions in France. I think it might be Loire Valley, but you know, still a very a significant honor for the state and the growth of our wine industry. Um, and also another uh, accolade that we received last year is that the Finger Lakes were recognized as one of the top ten tourism destinations for wine of the year. So uh, this is a, a very timely project, and we'll do a lot to advance the wine industry. Uh, the second grant is for the Brooklyn Alliance. Uh, they are going to be doing uh, three things. They're going to host a large-scale trade show in uh, Industry City, Brooklyn, to highlight all the great craft beverage producers we have there. Um, the second thing they're going to do is actually increase the marketing of Brooklyn-made craft beverage products. So they're going to update their website. They're going to create uh, kind of a virtual uh, craft beverage trail. And, and then the third thing they're going to do is provide trade show subsidies for their producers. So, you know, folks like Brooklyn Brewery or some of the distilleries that we have uh, can go, you know, within state or go out of state to, to participate in some of the top trade shows in the country. Um, you might ask yourself, you know, Brooklyn, uh, you know, the comedy of riches. I, you know, I think this is a worthwhile investment. We have 37 active uh, alcohol licenses in, in Brooklyn. There's 18 distilleries. We have Brooklyn Brewery again. We have two cider producers. And I just, looking the numbers up today, I was telling, sharing with Joe, I, a year ago I told him, you only have three wineries in New York City, which is pretty incredible. There's seven wineries now in Brooklyn. And it's just incredible the amount of growth in this industry. And, and this is going to be a great project to really uh, build on that brand of Brooklyn and build on the great producers we have there. I don't know. I, I was born in Brooklyn. When I was born in Brooklyn, everyone was trying to get out of Brooklyn. <laughs> now my kids are moving to Brooklyn. It's amazing. Everything's gone full circle. It's very impressive. Does any other directors have any uh, comments or questions uh, for Sam? Yes, Joyce. This association include beer as well as wine? The New York Wine and Grape Foundation? Oh, no, 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 no. I meant the craft beverage. Uh... Uh, the Brooklyn Alliance, uh, they're going to represent the the 37 uh, producers that are currently in Brooklyn. So it, it's the whole gamut of beer, wine, spirit, cider. I would just note that I was at an Indian restaurant Saturday night, and I ordered an Indian beer, and it was manufactured in Saratoga. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, so <laughs> the Kingfisher Brewing Company, which is an Indian brewery, That's owns the Saratoga Brewing Company. There you go. So There's very little yeah. about it. Beer that Sam does not. <laughs> <laughs> and it is a competitive process. I mean, these were set up as uh, competitive brands, correct? Uh, so, I, so the way it works is we have a minimum eligibility criteria, which is built into the CFA application online. So, if an entity meets the minimum eligibility, uh, they're kind of presumed to be accepted. We we do do a review process to make sure they hit on the the goals and the kind of mission of these grants. And if they don't, we ask them to go back and reapply and adjust their proposal so they get to a place where it's it's really, um, uh, you know, the, the goal of this grant program is to uh, maximize the exposure of New York State-made products, but also to increase sales and jobs that these, these manufacturers have as well. Okay. 
Um, would it be possible when the trade show takes place that we could visit it? Sure. Because I think it would be... It's great to see. What, it would be interesting and it would be helpful also to actually see what the response is and how they're promoting the products. Sure. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure the invitation goes to the board. Thank you. Excellent. Now, is everyone doing their part to advance the craft beverage? <laughs> 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 what did it? Absolutely. <laughs> Big choice is definitely thinking about. All right. Any other questions or comments from the public? Any comments from the public? Motion to approve. Moved. Second. Second. Mr. Chair, I just want the rec. Yeah. I want to recuse myself from the second item, the Brooklyn Alliance, because it's a former employer of mine. Okay. And so, Mark, just I approve the first one, but I'm just going to abstain from the second one. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Noted abstention. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. That's a consumer. It's not right. Too. Right. Okay, next up, Tom Conascenti uh, to present an item related to the Victoria Theater uh, land use improvement and civic project for the director's consideration. Tom, yeah. Thank you and good morning. The directors are requested to approve a five million. Murph loan and four million in grants to 233 West 125th Street Danforth LLC to provide financial assistance to the Victoria Theater land use improvement and civic project. 233 West 125th Street Danforth LLC is a special purpose entity created by Danforth Development Partners LLC and its development partners after they were selected to acquire and redevelop the vacant Victoria Theater in Harlem into a mixed use property comprised of affordable and market rate residential rental apartments, a hotel, retail, cultural arts space, and below ground parking. As background, the Victoria Theater in Harlem is currently owned by the Harlem Community Development Corporation, a subsidiary of ESD. In 2012, Harlem Community Development Corporation accepted and ESD adopted a general project plan for the project. In 2013, a modified general project plan was affirmed by both HCDC and ESD. In accordance with the modified general project plan, the mixed-use project will include approximately 385,000 square feet, including approximately a 208-room hotel, 192 units of affordable and market-rate residential rental apartments, 25,000 square feet of commercial retail space, and 25,000 square feet for cultural arts uses. The total project cost will be approximately $164.3 million. The company is responsible for preserving, restoring, or referencing historic elements of the building. This project was designated a priority project in 2012 and 2014 for the Regional Economic Development Council for the New York City region, which, as part of the fourth round of the Regional Council award process, recommended an award of grant funding to assist with the redevelopment. The project will redevelop the property in a manner that continues the renaissance of Harlem and fosters economic growth through the revitalization of arts uh, the revitalization of the area as an arts, entertainment, cultural, and commercial destination. Thank you. Great. Uh, directors, questions or comments for Tom? Yes, uh, Just why is this coming before us at this time? So we are uh, very close to uh, signing a lease for the project that will begin uh, the, the work that's needed to, to start the project. So that includes asbestos abatement uh, and demolition. This is a dramatic transformation on the site, um, and this building was vacant for a long time, if I'm not mistaken. That's so yeah. correct. It's Harlem's mm -hmm. first mm -hmm. full-service hotel. This is really um, quite an ambitious project, a nine-figure project. Uh, so it's quite something. Um, any other questions or comments for Tom on the project? Uh, any comments from the public on this project? Motion to approve. So moved. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Carried. Thank you very much, Tom. Thank you. Uh, Ken Tompkins, you're back. You're going to discuss uh, Fort Schuyler Quad C item for consideration. Ken? I am, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and directors, you're being asked to approve a grant of up to $3,100,000 to be used toward the sec a second B phase of construction <laughs> of the Computer Chip Commercialization Center, also known uh, in brief as Quad C, which resides uh, in uh, on the campus of SUNY Polytechnic Institute uh, near Utica, New York, uh, Oneida County. Uh, phase B focuses on the completion of a 253,000 square foot facility that will contain 
uh, flexible space, particularly clean the rooms, laboratories, lecture center, related facilities <laughs> for the purpose of helping to uh, promote research development and production of uh, semiconductor, particularly nanoscale semiconductor products. Uh, the, the building uh, was uh, a round one consolidated funding application priority project for the Mohawk Valley Regional Economic Development Council, uh, and the director supported that $51.9 million phase 1B. Uh, that has been completed. We are now moving on to uh, phase uh, 1B, which will uh, continue the construction of clean room space, uh, the remainder of the building's envelope. We'll also focus on uh, the purchase and installation of new advanced uh, technology semiconductor packaging equipment, packaging being a shorthand term for how to figure out how to put smaller and smaller chips together in a stacked way uh, and make them even more powerful than their predecessors. In October of 2013, the governor uh, announced along with the College for Nanoscale Science and Engineering, SUNY Polytechnic, and Fort Schuyler Management Corporation, the enterprise actually constructing a facility, uh, that it was going to establish a consortium of leading global, global technology companies to occupy this hub and to uh, uh, work in the area of advancing established technology in conjunction with the uh, College for Nanoscale Science and Engineering's mode in, uh, uh, a node in uh, Albany, um, uh, New York, and so the uh, the conduct uh, the directors are being asked to uh, allow us to complete the uh, quad C facility, which will house over 50,000 square feet of class 1,000 and uh, class 10,000 adoptive clean room facility, uh, uh, which will host uh, uh, new enterprises coming to this region and creating hundreds of new jobs, uh, and is considered a transformational project for the Mohawk Valley region. Excellent. Um, any director questions or comments? Well, we were, I'm sorry, go on, Teresa. Oh, I was just going to ask, so is this the final phase that we're going to be funding, or is it anticipated that there will be um, additional projects in the future? I, for now, I think this is uh, what you're being asked to find. Well, uh, I, I guess part of that is, uh, since it has, you know, uh, and I, forgive me, Mr. Chairman, I uh, don't want to be in a speculative mode, but the, the building has uh, started with a great promise that's already changed a bit with the announcement of Nano Utica. So I, I suppose it is possible that there could be more in the future, but this is what we know at the moment. Okay, so it's not currently being planned. It's this is the this is the final phase as of now. With the possibility uh, I'm defer, that sometime in the future yeah. there may be more. To the best Joyce, of my knowledge, a, that's true. Sure, yeah. um, yep. Go ahead. So this, sorry, can, uh, so this phase is sort of the next phase in sort of completion of the the building envelope and also uh, installation of advanced um, machining equipment. Ultimately, the right. building will be fit out to. Um, accommodate actual tenants that will occupy right. the Quad C building. So that so, will require additional... Uh, right, and actually later on the agenda, there's additional funding that's going to be right, I saw that, yeah. um, for the actual completion of Phase 1B and also additional investments um, for tenants that will occupy the building in the future. And have uh, right. tenants been identified? I noticed the completion date is December 2015. Um, have tenants been identified and has, what is the interest in... Uh, um, at, at this point, tenants have not been identified. Um, the Quad C and Fort Scala Management Corp. has been working with ANSI, which is um, a company that's being headed up by Hector Ruiz, who was the former head of AMD. Um, so there's a consortium of um, academia as well as professionals that are working to identify tenants in the future. Thank you. The, uh, just yesterday in Albany, we had a uh, a conference for the semi-industry and the supplier network, which was really fascinating. And as you know, the state has invested mightily in nanoscience and the semi-industry, and the private sector has stepped up with over $15 million of investment. This has probably been the single largest commitment the state and private industry has made to any single industry, in the certainly in the upstate region. 
uh, in many decades. So we have really hung our hat on, and for good reason, this really transformative industry. The benefits uh, that have accrued to the state and to Albany are clear. Uh, there has been a concerted effort to take that uh, critical mass, the contacts, the market share, and start to positively impact other parts of New York State, be it Utica, Rochester, Buffalo, Syracuse. So spreading the uh, investments that the state has made, spreading the business relationships and the private investment uh, west uh, has been an important focus of the states in recent years. Mr. <coughs> Adams is nodding his head because he's been instrumental in that over the years. Um, so when you have a really key asset like this in the state, you try to double down on it and leverage it for all that you can. This is, you know, the Riverbend project in Buffalo, New York, with the largest solar process, solar manufacturing plant in the Western Hemisphere under construction, in large part traces its roots back to relationships that CNSE has uh, as really a New York being a global leader in this type of nanoscience and semiconductor uh, science and development. So it's, that's just one example of how the investment in this industry is starting to transform other regions of the state, sort of like concentric circles. It started in Albany, but it's spreading out. Um, and like any good strategic plan, you build on your strength. And so for New York State now, that is really for many years, uh, two decades, we've really made a concentrated investment in this industry. So it's paying dividends beyond Albany, which is important. Um, any other questions or comments? Uh, any uh, from the directors? Any comment from the public? Motion to approve? Moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great. Thank you. Um, Thank you. All right. Let me see. With all that talking, I lost my place. Jim, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Good morning. Okay. Jim's going to talk you. about... Jim, all right, go ahead. You're going to talk Cayuga Marketing, right? Yes, that's correct. The uh, directors are being asked to approve a $2.5 million capital grant to support a $101 million um, project in Aurelius, uh, which is in Cayuga County, um, about uh, 30 miles uh, west of Syracuse. Uh, the project involved purchasing real estate, construction of a new 100,000 square foot dairy processing facility, and, and machinery equipment needed to uh, operate that plant. Uh, the plant converts liquid milk into powdered milk and is uh, exported around the world, uh, mainly currently focusing on uh, uh, Europe and Asia markets. Uh, some of the customers include Kraft, Hood, Lando Lakes, and Ben and & Jerry's. Um, this project uh, create, was to create 52 jobs, and uh, currently there are 55 employees at the plant. Um, Cayuga Marketing is made up of a consortium of 26 dairy farmers, through mainly surrounding the plant to support their um, industry. Um, the uh, the uh, plant became fully operational in January of 2015, uh, and this was a um, Regional Council Round 1 priority project. Um, I'd be glad to entertain any questions at this time. Great. Thank you. Directors, any question or comment for, for Jim on this item? Any comment from the public on this item? Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Any <laughs> opposed? Okay. Um, Milk, wine, beer. What's yeah. that? <laughs> all of our beverage groups, Joyce. Uh, let's see. Bonnie, what if? Uh, we're going to hand it <laughs> off to too. you. Uh, Bonnie's our um, Southern Tier Regional Office Director, and she's going to discuss the Corning Museum item for your consideration. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good morning. The directors are asked to approve a grant of $1.5 million to Corning Museum of Glass, also known as CMOG, for a portion of the cost associated with a $50.8 million expansion that will add 100,000 square feet to the existing CMOG facility. 
creating a new international motor coach entrance to the museum's contemporary art and design wing, which we also call the North Wing. The new entrance has been designed to include an indoor-outdoor reception area equipped with restrooms, exterior signage, video monitors, a large New York State map, and regional wayfinding designed to orient the international visitors to the museum and to encourage interregional travel throughout New York State. This is a regional council round three priority project and is consistent with the Southern Tier Regional Economic Development Council strategic plan to maximize opportunities for growth in international tourism. By expanding its facility, the Corning Museum of Glass will position itself as a premier international tourism destination in New York State that will directly benefit compatible industries and support initiatives across the region tailored to create and sustain job opportunities. The CMUG expansion project has been completed, providing support for 110 full-time equivalent construction jobs. The Corning Museum of Glass and Corning Enterprises have added five new full-time permanent jobs to date as a result of this project and will create an additional 10 full-time permanent jobs through 2016. Thank you for your consideration. Any questions for Bonnie or comment for Bonnie on the Corning Museum project? Yes. Sorry. Yes. Um, I just have a question about how accessible the Corning Museum is from uh, New York City, for example. Um, it's actually how tourists very accessible. get there? I'm sorry? Um, you can take 80 right into Binghamton, and from Binghamton, um, 17 and 80, 86, uh, I-86 goes right to Corning. It's a, it's a pretty straight shot, very easy to access, and it's a wonderful facility, and we encourage you to come visit. But the only way to get there is by car, or bus, I guess. Um, well, there is a, there, are <laughs> there, there are airports nearby. Uh, the uh, Corning and Elmira Airport is, uh, is probably the best airport in our region. Um, so it's easily accessible via that route as well. Well, let me ask you, how far, I know Corning is quite a bit west. How long does it take to get there from New York City if you were driving? Um, I believe Just it's thinking in terms of transportation infrastructure and what would be needed to enhance um, it traveling to this area. I believe it's about a five-hour trip. Mm -hmm. And well That's worth not it. It's terrible. <laughs> yes, it is worth it. Flies on Route 17 and yep. The Corning Museum of Glass is a real centerpiece for the southern tier, but we have tremendous tourism opportunities all around our area. So if you were to come to the Corning Museum of Glass and go to the International Visitor Center entrance, you would be directed to many of those other opportunities, including some really wonderful wine trails all along the Finger Lakes that um, radiate off of that area. Now, this is a woman who has answered this question before. Wow. <laughs> 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 wow. Awesome. I mean, I don't know if people realize the extent to which this museum is a tourist attraction. It's one of the most significant tourist attractions in the state of New York. It's yeah. quite That's, remarkable. It was mentioned they currently the attract about 430,000 visitors per year, and with this new expansion, they expect at least 100,000 more. It's great. <laughs> and it, it's great. Any other How questions? Much Does the directors spends? have any other questions or comments <laughs> on the Corning Museum? Yeah. Uh, but does the public have any comments so, well, on the Corning Museum? Yeah. Is there a motion to approve? So, so moved. moved. Second. Yeah. Thank, thank you. All in favor? Thank you. Right. Any opposed? Okay. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. All right. We're moving along. Uh, Barry Greenspan, representing Empire State Development's Long Island Regional Office, will present Hofstra University lab items for consideration. Barry, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good morning, directors. The directors are being asked to approve a $2 million Regional Council priority grant for a Round 3 project which was initiated in 2012. This is a project focused on increasing engineering graduates on Long Island. Hofstra University's School of Engineering and Applied Science has invested $5 million to create two unique and distinct engineering and teaching facilities at their Hempstead Nassau County campus. The first is a big data laboratory, and the second is a robotics and advanced manufacturing teaching facility, which will allow Hofstra to offer new engineering curriculums to meet changing industry and workforce needs. The Regional Council, at the start of the Regional Council process in 2011, identified 
a keen shortage of engineering graduates from Long Island schools, and it's a huge challenge threatening our region's ability to meet the demand from our growing technology and advanced manufacturing industries. For that reason, the Regional Council has been laser-focused on a strategy to increase engineering students, and Hofstra, along with Stony Brook University, have met that challenge. With, with Hofstra's two new School of Engineering facilities, they're able to offer new curriculum in big data coursework, enabling students to learn how to deal with unprecedented amounts of data at processing speeds unheard of just years ago. This skill set is needed in genomics, biology, and environmental sciences. The robotics and advanced manufacturing curriculum is required for students pursuing careers in advanced manufacturing, 3D printing, and factory automation. The labs will allow students to learn firsthand on modern big data processing computers and brand new advanced robotic equipment, and they will be much better prepared for the Long Island workforce. Hofstra has completed this project, spent $5 million in facility renovations and equipment acquisition, and is requesting ESD's $2 million in reimbursement. It should be noted that Hofstra University President Stuart Rabinowitz is the co-chair of our Long Island Regional Council, and he has recused himself from all project discussions and voting. We are requesting board approval to move forward with this project. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Barry. Uh, any direct or question or comment on uh, this Oscar project? Yes, uh, um, it, actually, it bears on this project and the one we discussed earlier with this tremendous state investment in um, technology, training of engineers, et cetera, tra training of scientists and the development of um, high-tech industry in New York State. And what occurs to me is that um, how much of a well-kept secret is this? I mean, New York City has gotten a lot of publicity for the create, you know, for its uh, contribution to contributing a high tech in contributing high tech in New York City and becoming a major competitor in that area. But it would seem to me that New York State has also been doing a lot in this area and has not been getting that kind of recognition. Demand is high for this education on Long Island, and uh, I'd say the Long Island Regional Council and their strategic plan for now going on five years has had uh, as one of its, I'd say, really handful of top priorities the uh, connection to its uh, research institutions and to uh, technology and life sciences. So it's definitely, I think, been... Um, Right, and there's a lot going on. I know at Stony yep. Brook also there's been um, yep. tremendous Brook growth. Stony Brook, others. So th this is definitely, as, as Long Island has been promoting their regional strategies, I think this has been an important part of it now for four or five years uh, straight. Yeah. Well, I was just thinking in terms of the marketing of the state, yep. that this is an aspect which yep. might be also uh, right. highlighted. More, other than just craft beverages, right. for example. Mm -hmm. It's a different market. <laughs> yes, no, it's a huge part of the, uh, you know, you see the tech business booming here yeah. in New York City and um, on Long Island. This project is to, in part because uh, they have the jobs, but they don't have people with the degrees. So um, to help fill that pipeline. And, uh, well, I was just wondering, um, Hofstra, um, for school like this, do we have any idea how many of these students come from in-state as opposed to out-of-state? I know that's not really relevant to, um, or not relevant, but it's not um, the kind of issue that one generally considers, but I'm just wondering in terms of um, New York students benefiting from this. Well, I don't have that statistic, but I could follow up with Hofstra and find out. I know years ago, Hofstra was much more of a commuter school, local students from Long right. Island. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It's really a local school, not a, you know, not a nationally known institution. Well, it, it is becoming much more nationally known, and especially in the, the uh, expansion of the engineering school has attracted students from really all over the country. It would be interesting to know um, how many students come from outside of uh, the Long Island area, and how many of them remain after graduation? How many of them are then employed in the New York area? I will talk to the engineering school and see if we can get some statistics on that, and then we'll follow up separately by email. 
I would appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks, Barry. Any other questions uh, from the directors or comment for Barry? No. Any comments from the public on this project? A motion to approve. Moved. Seconded. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Um, John, are you on the phone representing ESD's North Country Regional Office? Uh, you're scheduled to present three items on today's agenda. Uh, good morning, Mr. Board. Chairman and Director. Yep. Can you hear me okay? We yes. Can. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have three projects to present for the North Country. These are all completed projects. Uh, the first is the directors are asked to approve a grant to Jefferson County. A uh, grant of up to $1 million to be used for a portion of the cost of construction of a 5,000 square foot business center at the Watertown International Airport. The project is consistent with the North Country Regional Economic Development Council's plan to support activity leading to new business development, tourism, transportation, and improvement of the quality of life in North Country communities. The uh, total project cost is $1,200,000 with a $200,000 grant from, uh, I'm sorry, a $1 million grant from ESD. Uh, the Jefferson County sought ESD assistance to finance the airport improvement project and further develop this regional uh, asset. The county applied for funding assistance through the consolidated funding application process and was awarded $1 million. Without the ESD funding assistance, the county could not have proceeded with this important project. The uh, new facility provides a more extensive and modern facility for airport business operation and a new space for business use and traveler comfort. The, um, uh, the, uh, the earlier expansion of the airport runway has led has led to use by larger planes with more regular and connecting flights, resulting in flight schedules which are convenient for residents, business users, vacationers, Fort Drum soldiers, and their families. Uh, thank you, directors. That is what I have for the first presentation for the Jefferson County Watertown International Airport. Directors, any questions or comments on this project? Does the public have any comment on this project? Motion to approve? Second. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Excellent. Okay, second project. Uh, thank you, directors. The second project uh, in the North Country is for the city of Watertown, a grant of up to $500,000 to be used for a portion of the cost of construction of wastewater disinfection facility improvements. This is another project consistent with the North Country uh, plan to support new and existing business development by upgrading infrastructure in North Country communities. The total project costs were $5,370,000, the $500,000 grant from ESD. The city needed to upgrade it, its wastewater disinfection facility since the system was in need of repair and in inadequate for the needs of the growing city. <coughs> the uh, North Country Council established a specific infrastructure fund to assist North Country communities with these type of municipal infrastructure projects. The city plan design and installed upgrades and improvements to its wastewater disinfection facility. The project provides for enhanced quality of life for the community with an improved wastewater system for health and safety and provides for future growth opportunities. That is uh, my presentation for the second one for the city of Watertown. Okay, directors, any question or comment on Watertown wastewater improvements? Any comments from the public? Motion to approve? Moved. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, John, take it away one more right. time. Uh, thank you, directors. Uh, the third and final project for North Country Watertown area is the Village of Clayton, a grant of up to $500,000 to be used for a portion of the cost construction and installation of a new pump station and related sewer system improvements. Other municipal infrastructure improvement project, the project consistent with the North Country 
plan to support new and existing business development by upgrading infrastructure the total project cost was four point six million with a five hundred thousand dollar grant from ESD the village needed to upgrade its wastewater pump and pipe since the aged system was in need of repair and was inadequate for future growth <coughs> additionally the system could not support the growing needs of the village of Clayton the North Country Council established a specific infrastructure fund to assist North Country communities with these municipal infrastructure projects the village applied for funding assistance and was awarded five hundred thousand dollars through the CFA process the village plan designed and installed upgrades and improvements to its wastewater system the project consisted of a new pump station with a standby generator and replacement of the main sewer line at Riverside Drive in Clayton the project provides for enhanced quality of life for the community with an improved wastewater system for health and safety and provides for future growth and job creation. Thank you and that is my presentation for the village of Clayton. Okay. Uh, any director question or comment on the uh, Clayton pump station project? Any comment from the public on this project? Motion to approve. So moved. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you, Mary. Um, Kevin Hurley, representing Finger Lakes Region, will present on the uh, RIT dry room item for consideration. Go ahead, Kevin. Greetings from sunny Rochester. The directors are requested to approve a $400,000 capital grant to the Rochester Institute of Technology, or RIT, toward the cost of interior construction and the purchase of machinery and equipment for a low humidity battery prototype center known as a dry room on RIT's Henrietta campus. RIT partnered with the New York Battery and Energy Storage Technology Consortium known as New York Best along with ESD sister agency NYSERDA to establish the dry room where battery prototypes can be developed and produced to help emerging companies in the growing market. The prototypes would further would be further refined and tested at NY Best Eastman Business Park facility as part of the commercialization process. As a result of round two of the Governor's Regional Economic Development Council initiative in 2012, a battery technology company attracted to the Eastman Business Park received an award, which was later split into two parts, this being one of those two parts. RIT's component for the dry room consisted of a $400,000 capital grant. The dry room will be available to the 120 members of the New York Best Battery Consortium as well as by RIT researchers. ESDs and NYSERDA's assistance were critical to make the project happen. RIT renovated and equipped a 2,000 square foot room in one of its current buildings for this project. This is a completed project. On March 6th, we had a uh, grand opening. Lieutenant Governor Kane made a speech and I am happy to answer any questions. Directors, any questions uh, on the RIT uh, battery project? Does the public have any? I'm sorry, Joyce. What kind of batteries are these? Well, they're all types of energy storage uh, type products. I, I'm not an expert in batteries, but it's, it's, um, it has to do with being able to store energy like from solar panels. We get, so, we get lots of it in the summer, in the daytime, but not so much at night. So we've got to learn how to store them in various types, um, many, many applications, not just the, the batteries you buy in the store. What I was wondering was whether it was geared towards the solar industry or towards alternative, techno towards alter alternative energy uh, forms. Thank you. Um, it, it, it's... Uh, Many many applications. Is the things all the things you mentioned? Yes, cell phones are a very large component of this. Uh, for batteries, that uh, that was one of the driving forces initially was uh, batteries and cell phones and handheld technology uh, was one of the again one of the, in, the initial types of applications for this. But there are many many other industrial applications. Well, Kevin, I want to say that we're pretty disappointed you don't get sun at night in Rochester. <laughs> <laughs> Your regional council has a lot of work ahead of it. <laughs> Thank you for that presentation. Excellent. Um, any questions from the directors? 
Any comment from the public? Motion to approve. Moved. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you, Kevin. Kelly will now present the Market New York Grant Program consent calendar for the director's consideration. Good morning, Chairman, and uh, good morning to the directors. Um, the Division of Tourism is asking the directors for approval of actually just one uh, of the projects uh, for $25,000. Um, it's a round three Market New York working capital project that was awarded to the Jiva Theater in the Finger Lakes region. This project um, uh, is initiating a marketing plan to promote the Jiva Theater and its production, as well as building awareness for the surrounding region in order to increase tourism visitation and spending in Rochester and the overall Finger Lakes region. Uh, the status of the project is about midway um, at this point. Okay, any questions? Is that, is that your full report? Yes, we just have one, uh, one Market New York grant for approval this month. Okay. Uh, any questions or comments from the directors with regard to this item? Any from the public? Motion to approve? So moved. Seconded? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Lyndon, I think uh, you're up. Uh, thank you. Uh, the first project is additional funding to the Quad C project previously approved by the board this morning. Um, the project involves a $180 million grant to Port Schuyler Management Corporation for the purchase and installation of new advanced technology semiconductor packaging and equipment, as well as construction of the Quad C at the SUNY IT campus. Um, the 253,000 square foot facility will contain clean rooms, laboratories, office, a lecture center, and related utilities. Um, uh, when completed, the Quad C will be an integral component of Nanotechnica, uh, the second major hub for nanotechnology and research and development in New York State. Um, this phase of the project is expected to be completed um, in December of uh, 2015. Uh, the second project is a $300,000 grant to Seneca County Industrial Development Agency for building renovations, upgrading equipment at the Seneca Army Depot. The project will support the Finger Lakes uh, Technology Group, a telecommunications company uh, located at the depot. Uh, this project is expected to be completed by December of this year. Thank you. Okay, any, um, any questions from the directors for Glenn? Yes, Joyce. Um, $180 million. Is this uh, financed through bonds issued by this agency, or is this financed through the general? Um, What's the funding source? It's, 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 in the, it's in the ESD capital budget, so it'll be bonds issued. Here. But it'll be a bond issuance by the agency. I would believe so. Just wondering where the $180 million was coming from. <laughs> It's in the capital budget. It's a, an appro lined out appropriation specifically for this project. Yeah, yeah this is an, an executive item that was, as Kathy mentioned, that was lined out in the 14-15 budget and also the appropriate in this year's budget. And the recipient is Fort Scarlet Management Company. Right. right. Um, an entity of the state. Yeah. And generally, Joyce, just to your point, the $180 million likely means won't be bonded all at once as it's, uh, you know, we, we do things in... Don't know, yeah. Any other questions or comments on the project? Any comments from the public? Is there a motion to approve? <coughs> so moved. A second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, Brian will present two items relating to New York State Innovation Venture Capital Fund. We'll vote after each item. Brian, the floor is yours. Sure. Uh, we have two items today, as you mentioned. The first one is our initial uh, direct investment that's coming out of the fund, and it's in a company, the Paper Battery Company, which is uh, <laughs> we're requesting $600,000 for that investment. The company is a manufacturer of electrical components, which are, are called superconductors, that are used in the uh, ener energy storage for mobile devices, computer uh, servers, and other electronic items. 
company is located in uh, Troy, New York, and is a spin-out of Rensselaer Polytechnical Institute. Uh, the company has developed proprietary materials and manufacturing processes that yield a product that has a unique form factor and performance characteristics that uh, provide a wide application in the energy storage market uh, in, in, for electronic devices. The company's products have reached the point where they're in qualification with a number of uh, manufacturers and uh, developers of products, and they are expecting to have orders coming by the end of the year out of that process. And the funds that we used from this financing for completing that OEM testing and evaluation process, further refining of their manufacturing process, and expanded sales, marketing, and engineering teams. Uh, questions or comments from the directors for Brian? Brian, can we just remind everyone of some of the parameters of this uh, fund? Sure. Um, it is intended to fill gaps in the funding marketplace for venture capital, primarily in the seed and early stage uh, formation stages. Uh, the scale of the investments for the seed, which is generally pre-revenue companies, is 100000 up to 750000 with two-to-one matching by the private sector. This investment would fall into that category. It has two-to-one matching, and it's in, in the size uh, that's it's within the seed uh, parameters. We also have a parameter to invest in a little later stage companies, companies in the revenue generating phase of anywhere from a 750000 up to $5 million. Those companies also have to have a uh, two-to-one match, and they do have to commit to staying located in writing in the state of New York. Okay. And this one's in, is this the one that's in Troy? Correct. Yep. Okay. Any other director questions or comments? <laughs> Any comments from, sorry, go Oh, I should note, we have, the, the, the investment was uh, reviewed and recommended by our external advisory committee, which we've established to uh, help us assess these investments. Yeah, I mean, and you guys have done a, a good job of putting in protections for the state in the way you've structured the deal. You've got preference, you've got liquidity preference, you've got anti-dilution provisions, you've got, you've got yourself covered in a lot of ways. There's no guarantee, of course, with early stage businesses, but I think the way you structure the deal uh, is very prudent. Um, yeah, I mean, I was, from the time I first came on the board, <laughs> Stenith, I was an advocate for a state-funded yes. venture capital ages. program right. in which the state would benefit from any um, upside in the uh, companies in which it's uh, in which it's giving its support. So, um, glad to see that this is actually happening. We're also finding it's a catalyst for the private sector to you know, right. come around in a company as well. Yeah, well, hopefully, as it grows, it will attract private capital also. Great. Okay. Any uh, co any other questions or comments from directors? Any comments from the public? Motion to approve. So moved. And seconded. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Brian, you have one more. Yes. Um, the second uh, request we have for, for funding is uh, approving two more investment firms to participate in our technology commercialization program, which is a, a sub-segment of the uh, Innovation Venture Capital Fund. It is a pool of $8 million in capital that we've allocated specifically to help commercialize uh, very early stage uh, opportunities coming out of universities and uh, research centers across the state. Uh, we initially have a, a approved $5 million for three upstate firms in December, and this is two additional firms for the downstate region and we are recommending a total allocation of three million split equally between the two firms. Uh, we had a total of four responses to the RFP. Uh, the two that we selected we felt had the best combination of the focus on what we were looking to achieve, working with the universities, providing support to those uh, companies coming out of the universities, and then obviously uh, in investment uh, knowledge and expertise. The uh, two firms that we are uh, recommending the allocations for are Accelerate Long Island, which is an organization formed by Long Island's leading research organizations to help commercialize their research activities. And then uh, a new fund that the uh, CUNY system, the Technology Commercialization Office out of the CUNY system, is uh, will be creating and money running. It's the uh, New York City Innovest Fund. So each, each organization we're recommending an award of one and a half million. Excellent. Any uh, director questions for Brian? Yes, Joy. Yeah, I'm just wondering, um, 
what the fee structure is like for this, or what the fees are for the... Um... Well, it'll be a, a 2% uh, management fee with a 20% carry, or some of the firms have expressed uh, they'd rather reduce the carry and have a bit more uh, management fee, given that it's not a large pool of money. They feel that to right. do the work, it might be a 3%, 15% split might be more appropriate. And they will be co the, those firms will be co-investing in these projects? They have a one-to-one -one matching requirement with the private sector and also New York State presence requirements as well. It fits within the, the rest of that. Any other question or comment? Director, question or comment? Any comment from the public? Motion to approve? So moved. And seconded? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thanks, Brian. Rachel will present a uh, contract amendment item related to the Brooklyn Development Center. Rachel? Good morning. Thank you. The directors are being requested to authorize the corporation to amend a contract with STV for consultant services in preparing an environmental impact statement for the disposition and development of two non-contiguous parcels on the Brooklyn Developmental Center site. ESD conditionally designated a developer in response to an RFP issued in 2013. The developer's proposal was for an as of right 164 residential unit project based on the cr criteria outlined in the RFP. In February of this year, the developer submitted a revised proposal for the two parcels that increases the proposal to approximately 863 units to be developed consistent with an adjacent zoning desi designation. STV had been selected <coughs> from ESD's pre-qualified list of real estate development and planning related consultants to prepare a short form environmental assessment based on the original proposal. Due to the change in the developer's proposal, an environmental impact statement, or EIS, must be prepared to adequately address the potential for significant adverse impacts suggested by this change. ESD requested STV to submit a proposed scope of work and budget to prepare the EIS. Due to STV's familiarity with the site and given the substantial amount of existing conditions work they've already completed for the initial proposal's environmental assessment, it was determined that it would not be cost or time effective to rebid for the EIS services. STV has prepared the initial proposal's assessment to ESD's complete satisfaction and has demonstrated a comprehensive understanding of the issues to be addressed in the expanded scope of services. For the reasons stated above, an amendment in the amount of $966,140 is requested to complete the environmental review for the project. The original contract amount was $30,460. Therefore, the revised contract total amount would be $996,600. The amended contract will continue to be funded in its entirety from the impressed account funded by the developer. And there is an overall MWE participation goal of 30% for this contract. Great. Thank you. Do the directors have any questions or comments for Rachel? Uh, just where exactly is this taking place? Um, it's in Spring Creek. It's um, across from the Gateway Estates. Okay. Canada. Anyone else? Any comments from the public? Is there a motion to approve? So moved. And second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Um, David Solway will present the final item on today's agenda. That item is a contract item relating to the broadband program. David, it's all yours. Good morning, Mr. Mr. Chairman, Director. This is being asked for authorization to enter into a contract with the New York State Technology Enterprise Corporation, NYSEC, to provide industry expertise to assist the broadband program office with the project management and technical assistance for a number of broadband-related projects. Sultan would provide industry expertise to assist the BCO with the project management and technical assistance for a number of broadband-related projects. The type detail and specification of NYSEC support will vary based on the actual project the nature of support to be organized in the following areas. Procurement assistance, business analysis, infrastructure, project management, quality assurance, and network support. Contract amount is asked to be $541,137, exclusive of cost, fees, and expenses. NYSEC's effort is based upon most favored rates 
provided by an OGS contract. The contract will be funded in its entirety from an interest account maintained by ESD and funded by the proposed project developer. I'm happy to answer any questions. There is additional background on the project in the director's material. Director, questions or comments for David? I have a question. David, is NYSTEC the tech? Good morning, it's Kenneth. Is NYSTEC the group that's out of Griffiths Air Force Base? It sure is. Yes, it is. Okay, so these guys do technology consulting for a number of state agencies, right? They've been around for a number of years. Exactly. They're working with DOH now on, I believe, the health care exchange and a number of state projects. You're right. They're sort of the on-call experts for independent analysis for technology for state agencies. Great, great. I just, in my travels, I thought that I had met them, but I wanted to confirm it was the same group. They're terrific. Thank you, David. Yeah, we met together a couple months ago, Kenneth. Great, great. Any other question or comment for David? Any public comment? Motion to approve? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Let's see what we have left. Do we have anything left? Not a thing left. Not a single thing left. How about that? Okay. Is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. We're adjourned. Thank you all for participating. You're welcome. Thank you.